What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the EPM Show. This is all things enterprise performance management, and we're here to give you an unfair career advantage. Today, we have Joe Van Boulderen on the podcast. He is a career consultant, and he recently made the jump to start his own Anaplan implementation firm called VBCG. And he joins me today to talk about just his journey and what he's learned along the way in the Anaplan ecosystem. And some of the things we talk about today are how to set yourself up for success by aligning expectations with leadership, a lot about soft skills and, and how to push back effectively in a productive way when you are the subject matter expert and a consultant working with leaders on an Anaplan implementation. He also shares a, an, an awesome announcement, really cool announcement with his about his new AI Anaplant assistant that he's created called Anna. And it's supposed to give you master Anaplan level solution architect level insights and advice on how you can get the most out of your Anaplan investment. And then we also talk a lot about career success and how it's a product of continuous improvement. He's always focused on being in the growth zone rather than the comfort zone. And and I love his sites around some of the advice he received from different podcasts and books he's read. One that stuck out is about Charlie Munger and the beauty of simplifying everything in your approach and your communication and why that is a worthy goal. I hope you get a ton of insights and a ton of inspiration from Joe on his journey and some of the things he's learned along the way. And check it out. It's Joe, what's going on, man? And Chad, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey, Joe, let's jump right in here. Give me your career flyover in 60 seconds or less. Tell the audience how you got to where you are today. I always wanted to own their own business. This finally came to fruition now, except for some side businesses. But, you know, I went to university, applied to a management degree, Bowling Green State University in Ohio. Uh, then I got into IT consulting, only consulting firm that came to our job fair. That was an audit. Uh, that gave me the experience of systems and IT. Um, and then I used my sound skills to love resenting to Anaplan. I knew someone who referred me to a small shop called Plain Rocket. The rest is history. I've been in Anaplan ecosystem since 2016 and now have VVCG, my own consulting. That's awesome. You made the entrepreneurial leap. What was that experience like as you were planning to, to make the jump? Tell me a little bit more about that because I know we have consultants and customer leaders in the audience who've always wanted to do that as well as a part of their career? It's something I've thought about for a while, like I said. So I think in the back of my mind, I've been saving off necessary information uh, that I could come back to or saving off files for how I'd want to structure something. So I kind of had a good starting point just because I try to compare myself for when it's time. Um, but yeah, just, just some research and confidence myself to do what I've always done again since 2016 when I just do anything so I'll do what I'm good at and do that for myself and be my own ball and it's nice to kind of pull my own shots so yeah I, I would just suggest people just believe in themselves and um, do the research and make sure that you know what you're doing before you get yourself in. love that that is awesome and best of luck as you build build your firm out so I always like to ask a fun question as well, so the audience can get to know you a little bit better. So Joe, I know you were a cross country runner in college and we were talking offline and you've got some, some family history in the wrestling world as well. Um, if you could go pro at any sport, what would it be and why? What's well, tough. What's um, tough. I'll throw a curveball here. I'd rather be more intelligent. So maybe I'd pick up a sport like like chess or something. Um, you know, I, I love physical exercise. I think you know it's really good for your, your brain and your health, and I enjoy it. But I think it would be more fun to just be able to outmaneuver someone in chess. Anyone you play it like Carl Magnetti. So, um, yeah, that's my choice. That is definitely a curveball, but I think it makes a ton of sense. I am not a chess player. But I have heard that it just it it tr helps you teach your mind how to think so much more strategically, which is never a bad thing. Learning how to think one, two, three steps ahead, anticipate, know your opponent. I think that's a that's a really unique answer. That's one of the more creative answers we've had on the show. 
that that's awesome. I, I love it. So, Joe, you've you you've made the jump, like you said. You want to be able to call your own shots. Before that, career consultant. And one of the things that just in talking to you, I know that you're super passionate about is the way you approach kind of preparing management for a successful implementation. Some people might call that stakeholder management, right? Kind of leading the leaders, if you will. So talk to me about how you approach stakeholder management in an, impl in an Anaplan implementation as a consultant and maybe some areas where you, you've seen it go wrong and how you try to do it differently. It comes down to two things, uh, setting expectation, the setting the right expectations and being very open and honest the whole time. I mean, you're one team, it takes the client and the implementer and the end of plans in there, of course, in, in my situation, uh, but it takes everyone on those teams to work together. It's not one or the other that's just going to make it happen. Um, so setting expectations is very important up front because if the team is misaligned, then you're going to be going in the wrong direction. Um, if the client thinks you're going to get X and you think they're going to get Y, right? The misalignment. You want to make sure that your expectations on what will be delivered and what timeline and what way and who's involved is all established up front. So making sure everyone's on the same page. Um, and then after that, just making sure you're keeping everyone up to date. As soon as there's a problem, you're sure coming back with the client. Or in vice versa, if the client's you know, something they're worried about, they're telling you immediately, not maybe on the next call or in two days. You know, instant feedback loops are uh, crucial. So those are the two main things that I try to focus on. And I use tools to help facilitate that. You know, the Enterprise Way app and also my own little tracker called the BU tracker, plugin update tracker, um, so that we can add in new functionality as we're building, because stuff always comes up. Um, and then also keep a list of stuff that can be updated once um, the implementers like myself are gone. I love that. I heard, I heard alignment is key and having a, a, a quick and effective feedback loop is important. John Maxwell, he talks a lot about that, that one of the jobs of a leader is to make sure everyone's rowing in the same direction. And I, I just love that mindset of as a consultant, you have to go in there and remember that you are this me, you're the subject matter expert. So you kind of have to own that position. And, and, and part of leading is being able to set those clear expectations, making sure everyone's on the same page, doing the work up front to align expectations will create success on the back end, right? And it's a positive flywheel. Tell me a little bit more about those tools that you use, just kind of as a specific framework for our audience, maybe they can implement it in their own practices or what have you, but can you dive in a little bit further there? Yeah, so I believe in, you know, Kaizen on continuous improvement in my supply chain background, you know, as long as you're continuing to get better and make your process more efficient um, and more productive. So I like, I'm a huge fan of AI tools, uh, specifically LLMs that are newer or NLPs. You know, ChatGPT is great to reference. You know, you, you've got to be very careful on what you're putting in there and how and make sure that you're completely respecting and abiding by your client's correct data processes and structure and government. But it's a, it's a great tool to leverage to ask questions. Um, I'm about to launch, I'm posting it here today. An Anna, Anna Plan Assistant I have created on ChatGPT where you can reference the documents that have been published by Anna and other material that I've included in there to help you ask any enterprise questions. So whether it's process, whether it's design. Um, so I'm trying to integrate what I'm doing at my company out there for all of my clients and customers and whoever else to be able to leverage an AI assistant that is like your enterprise expert. So hopefully people can find that. Um, but there's a variety of other tools that we also use and I can touch on that if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me a little bit more about just your process and how you built this Anaplan AI assistant. And is it just for your clients? Is it like open source where anyone can get in there and use it? Like, tell us more. Yeah, so I'm just going to make this available. I, I prefer that method when new technology comes out. More access is better. I mean, I think for myself, it's more just providing exposure to people on on my brand and what we're doing here as far as targeting remediations. I'm usually 
people get into that position where there's an issue going on with Interplane because they don't know who to ask what questions to. And not everyone can be a master interplane or a solution architect to spend the time saying, get there or spend the money to hire someone because there is it's still a pretty high demand for the talent. So having an will be a much cheaper solution. Um, so anyone will be able to access it. And, you know, it, it also comes with, you have to have some background on prompting and hopefully some familiarity with these LLM tools, because the better your questions and how you structure them, the better the results you'll get back. So you can really use it as an SA, Master Anna Planner, Data Integration Specialist, um, and then you can ask any question regarding your Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. I, I love the application to, you know, you kind of touched on a talent a little bit there. This is something that someone in-house, maybe you don't have an Anaplan solution architect in-house full-time. This is something you can kind of use to, to bridge the gap in a way and help people be more self-sufficient if they're an end user in the tool and things like that. So yeah, just another example of how AI is helping to enhance productivity of the workforce. I love that. That's a, that's a really cool innovative approach and we'll be excited to follow how you how you leverage this tool and just kind of that journey and its growth in the ecosystem so you know one of the things you mentioned at the beginning when we were talking about um just your approach to stakeholder management you talked about kind of being able to keep a list of you know everything else that you you could want to do maintenance updates things like that um tell me a little bit about a consultant's role in helping the client stay focused throughout an implementation, maybe moments where you have to push back if they get distracted, things like that. When you're managing that relationship, how do you, how do you handle and approach moments where you have to push back or you have to be a little bit more direct? Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Um, excuse me. Happy to. So this is, there's a fine line of pushing back. You've got to do it in the right way. And this goes with any job, you know, if you have good soft skills, that will take you a long way. So knowing how to say that you can or can't do something is very important. That's step one. You figure out how you're going to say it and make sure it's the right message. And if you just say no, you're not being a good consultant. You're not being a good team member. It's more, here's why I think we may not be able to do that. I'm explaining, you know, it usually comes down to the time. There's a project, maybe it's 12 to 16 weeks. Most Anaplan projects, um, you only have so much time to add in stuff that comes in during the middle of the project. You require it's users realize what Anaplan can do. So they ask for me to have this functionality as well. So yeah, absolutely. That's what Azure is for. Add it in, but you got to take something out. Or if you're ahead, then you can add it in and great. You can get more done. But you're going to have that open conversation. Um, it, it leads to transparency, right? You got to push back. You also got to be transparent. And I think that's the best way that I've found to push back. Just make sure everyone's on the same page. And generally speaking, most people are pretty reasonable. And they understand it's only so much time in the day. There's only so much hours that you can put into the project as planned. So you just have to iterate from there. That's good. The word that comes to my mind as you talk about that is this is kind of refocus or redirect. You have to refocus the client on the core objectives of a project. And this goes for a customer. If you're if you're in if you're in industry and you're an Anaplan solution architect, right, or you're building a career to customer, that's important too because you have business units that are your your internal clients, if you will, or a consultant. You've got to be able to focus people in on that that eighty twenty, right? Eighty percent of the result comes from twenty percent of the effort, twenty percent of the objective. So, no, that's good. I love that. And then diving into the why, right? And part of the why is that is keeping people focused. So that's, that's really, really good. I love it. I love it. And Joe, you've, you've had, like we talked about a really great career so far in consulting, you're building your own practice in your mind. If you were speaking to someone who's earlier in their career or looking to make a change, whatever you would, whatever it would be, what, what do you think has been some keys for you in building a successful career in the EPM space and the Anaplan ecosystem? Continuously improve. You know, come back to that. Just keep learning. Make it fun to learn. You know, learn stuff you want to. For me, I really enjoy reading biographies and listening to audiobooks about successful business people. 
Um, I also enjoy keeping up the speed with the latest innovation. So that happens to be mostly in AI right now. Um, so I can apply those things into work and hopefully you can apply the things that you enjoy into work as well, whatever way that may be. So constant improvement on the stuff you enjoy. You know, there, there's a work aspect, like you have to put in work and it's not always going to be fun, but there's also an element of you only really feel a true sense of achievement if you're putting work in the parts that aren't fun to get to that point where you do enjoy it. So there's a balance to be had. You're not going to enjoy every minute of every day, um, but just keep pushing through, work hard and improve. And I mean, it's, it's very simple. Uh, so nothing unique there, but that's kind of what I try to do and what I'm going to try to continue to do. Give me a, a, your, your list or a couple of your top biographies that you've read of business people or books that have recently inspired you or elevated your thinking. Well, the first one that popped in your head was Tao of Charlie Munger. Um, if people aren't here, I've heard of the Founders Podcast. I've listened to a bunch of Charlie Munger episodes on that, so which got me introduced to that book. And I think that book is fantastic. Um, there's also, you know, a more controversial figure is Rockefeller. But there's a lot of value to be had in reading about Rockefeller and his thought process. So one of the books I'm just starting to read, I'm excited about is 38 Lessons from Rockefeller to His Son. And it's, I think that's amazing. You're getting access to an extraordinary man's mind, writing to his son, never expecting this material to be published. So it's his true thought. And again, he, he is that way, you know, not the pinnacle of being a great person, but he definitely has a lot of lessons to share with the world too and what he's been through and his experiences. And those are just a couple I can think of off the top of my head. No, that's good. What what stuck out to you in some of the Charlie Munger uh, podcast episodes that you've listened to or the book you've read? My takeaway is that I think Warren Buffett does this too. You know, the partners are similar in this way. They just simplify things so well. And I try to do that in my life, and it's really hard. I'll speak about a topic. I realize if I say... Now, 50 words, when I could have said three, I'm not very, I don't understand that topic very well. <laughs> so my goal is always to simplify everything as I'm learning. And if I can be more simple with how I approach things and how I communicate things, uh, then I believe that I have better understanding in those and I'm doing a better job. So it's not one specific quote from him, but in general, I think overall simplicity is one of the big takeaways I have from him. One of the things we talk about a lot, Blake and I, is the novice will overcomplicate, but the expert will simplify things. That's the true sign of an of an expert is someone who can distill down like a complex idea into bite sized chunks and steps and make themselves replaceable really quickly. Right? And I think so many people in their career try to overcomplicate things to show their expertise, but it actually has the opposite effect. Right? Whereas mm -hmm. effective leadership is at the end of the day reproduction. I've got to be able to reproduce myself in order to make the biggest impact in the organization, the business, whatever it would be. So I love that. I love that idea of simplicity. And I think that every consultant or Anaplan solution architect who works in-house in industry, that should be the goal, right? Is to simplify what needs to happen in order to get the most out of the tool. That is a fantastic, fantastic insight, Joe. I'm curious. Got another question for you here on just finance transformation and implementations. What is a commonly held belief about finance transformation that you passionately disagree with and why? I feel like I'm copying out a little because it seems like the most straightforward answer is that money doesn't solve a problem. So you can't just throw money at something and say, it's done. You know, I'm like the decision to purchase anything. Some people just expect it to be very simple. But like anything, you've got to put in time and effort and focus. And that starts with leadership. Leadership doesn't do that. It's email. So um, everyone has to be on the same page again. And they just have to be focused and dedicated to that. Most implementations fail when something isn't ready. So whether it's the people or your systems to adapt to anything. Um, not when, if everyone's not ready, then it's just you're doomed from the start. Yeah. Doing money at a problem won't solve it. You've got to be bought in and have the right leadership and vision. But it starts with people, right? People process technology. The technology is just a tool. If nobody uses it, then it's not very valuable. 
if no one knows how to use it, then it's not maximizing its potential. No, that's great. That's great. One of the, um, one of the top challenges we see in the ecosystem right now is around talent and, and solution architects. There's a higher demand for those types of folks, both at firms and at customers. Can you talk to me a little bit about your thoughts, your perspective on what it takes to retain and develop top talent in the Anaplane ecosystem? So I think if you look at any really successful startup or company that's large today, because, you know, they grew rapidly, people are usually bought into their mission. So I think it starts foundationally to, are people bought into what your company is doing? And now not every company is going to be like SpaceX launching rockets, right? Some companies have to, you know, make meat and potatoes. So the stuff that we deal with every day, so then the backup to if the company is not, you know, your passion, the people that are be as well, the, the leadership and your teammates and your, the, the environment, the cold. Um, so I would say that's all very important to growing and having a mission behind your company so that people will stay there. Now, separately on the talent side, it's never been easier to learn Airplay or any other technology at that. Well, with chat GPT or any other tool similar, you have so much exposure to learn and you know, access to information that was so hard to find before. You know, books are great for translating information from one generation to the next, but it now you can just ask a bot or a, a chat assistant and they will tell you pretty dang good answer now and it's only getting better sharing well, um, yeah, that, I mean, the future is here and happening and getting even as far as the output from those, those tools. So it's never been easier to pick up and plan. And I think, you know, we're in for a lot of changes to come. Um, but if, if someone's looking to get into it, there's still plenty of opportunity and you're going to grow much quicker than anyone else. As in the past. There is increasing opportunity as companies become more and more reliant on technology. But I love what you talked about there around connecting people to kind of the bigger purpose of the organization. And that 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 does a hundred percent fall on leadership. You are correct. And establishing and, and, and cultivating buy-in is has never been more important when it comes to talent retention and being able to remind people of the greater purpose that they serve by the work that they do. Because you talked about it earlier, not every day is going to be a good day. Not every day is going to be a fun day. And so on those days when it's a challenge, you've got to be kind of reminded of, of the why, why you're doing it. So I love those insights. Last kind of question for you, Joe, here. Fast forward to the end of your career. What kind of impact do you want to have? So I thought about that a lot, sort of a company, you know, talking about mission and buy-in and how do I make it somewhere people will enjoy to work. So my goal for myself is to only work with good people, people that I could be friends with outside of work. Not necessarily going to be the case all the time, but people that I respect and they respect me and we will always treat each other with respect because if you don't have that, then you're going to have a fracture in the team at some point um, as you grow. So with that, um, I just think I want to make an impact, a positive impact for anyone that I work with. And that's to start, you know, with the clients, but I'm going to work with my team and the people that are going to be a part of the BBCG. And I want to make sure that they are happy at work, they're fulfilled. Um, we're having a good time. It's fun. And there's especially good experience that I had with playing Rocket Consulting when I started in Interplane, you know. Evan and Almer, shout out to them. They did a fantastic job at making a workplace fun and, you know, getting a lot done. We were very productive. It was a great experience, great outcome. And um, I, I really am trying to take the best of the companies that I got experience at and bring them in to create that value for anyone that I work with. You know, be productive, but have a good time along the way and really enjoy life. It, it's, and uh, I don't know, simple stick, but that's, that's my goal is just to have fun and get the right people. Have fun with the right people, right? I mean, 
we only get to do this go around one time. So do it with people that you love, that you care about. Have a good time doing it and whatever you do, do it well. Uh, that, I think that's incredible. So Joe, you started the entrepreneurial journey. Um, what's kind of next for you? Your, what's your big, hairy, audacious goal that you're eyeing right now? It could be professional, it could be personal, but is there anything in particular you're going after that you want to share with the audience? On the professional side, I would just say, you know, scaling that company up and hopefully impacting people's lives in a positive way, whoever's a part of it, a client or employee. Um, from a personal side, there's no, there's no metric to that. I mean, I believe that happiness doesn't come with some big number or big goal from a money side. And I think, you know, it comes every day in what we do. So not much from that end other than just create something great. Um, and then from a personal side, I, I don't have a, a clear goal right now. I just got back from traveling for a bit and that was, that was a huge goal. My bucket was lighter. Me and my wife quit and traveled the world for a year. And after doing that, I'm not sure what goal to set for myself because that was amazing. I'd suggest it to anyone and I would do it again if I can. So, uh, no huge goal right now, but trying to create one from where I'm at. That's, that's awesome. You've kind of already accomplished a BHAG, which was be able to travel for a year with your spouse. That's you just created a lifetime of memories right there uh, early on in, in your marriage and, you know, in your adult life. That's incredible. So Joe, this has been awesome. Thank you for the time. Thank you for sharing some of your insights on just successful Anaplan implementations as a consultant, career insights, life purpose insights. It's all so, so good. I'll get you out of here on this. If people want to continue this conversation with you or reach out, where can they find you? LinkedIn is very easy for anyone, you know, in the business realm. My my email is joe at vanbaldrycg.com. I won't quite give out my phone number, but reach out to those and I'm happy to chat and continue the conversation. Hopefully people find the Anarch tool. Um and yeah, I'm happy to chat with anyone about travel, any of the interests they talk about, or or the company. Anyone can reach out anytime. Fantastic. Joe, thanks for being here today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Wherever you're consuming this, if it's YouTube, if it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, we appreciate you. Make sure you're subscribed. We have a lot more amazing guests on the way, a lot more great content. We're doing our best to bring you value and have fun while we do it. And we really want this to be a career advantage listening to this show and we want you to enjoy it. So it means a lot. Make sure you're subscribed for what's, what's to come. And also, if you're up for it, it would mean a lot if you leave us a like, a comment, a rating, a review, whatever platform you're on. That really helps and it gets us fired up when we see those. So I appreciate you guys. Find us on LinkedIn. I'm Blake Bozarth. My co-host, Chad Pike with a Y. Would love to connect with you there. Have an awesome day. See you next time. Peace.